Are you staring down the essay prompts of the Common Application and wondering how you should be approaching your Common Application essay? If so, in this video, I'm gonna talk through some quick tips on the 2021 to 2022 Common Application essay prompts. Now, if you're watching this video and it's after 2022, don't fret. Typically, the common application essay prompts are the same year over year. They might change a little bit. There also might be subtle differences or a single question that swaps out. Just be sure to double check the prompts before you get started. But the majority of what I say in this video is probably still going to hold true. My name is Brooke. I've been an independent college consultant for over a decade and a half. You can find out more about me at supertutortv.com, where we've also got a couple of online prep courses for the SAT and the ACT if you're looking to get the most awesome score possible. I also have a couple of math books for the ACT math section. You can find those on Amazon. On. Subscribe to our mailing list. It's totally free. It won't cost you a cent. SuperTutorTV.com slash subscribe and we'll keep you in the know of more college awesome news. And you can also follow us on social. Finally, you can always read this blog instead of watch this video if you don't have 10 minutes to spare. I will also link out to the common application prompts. So if you need a copy of those or want to look over that while you watch this video, also be sure to head to our blog link in the description. Cool. So let's get into the common app prompts. There are seven prompts for the common application, and I'm going to go through my favorite prompts, what I think are the most dangerous prompts, and then I'm going to give you guys some tips for how to address each prompt if you happen to pick that one. So the first thing that I'm going to address is what are my favorite prompts for the common application. Two of my favorite prompts are number one and number five. The reason I like number one and number five is they generally don't steer you into a cookie cutter cliche direction as much as some of the other prompts do. I also find that almost anyone can write about them. Sure, there are those of you out there that have wonderful sap stories and you're going to be able to write about, you know, adversity that you've overcome or something like that. But for the rest of us, sometimes it's really refreshing to have number one because number one is basically some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, please share your stories. The whole point of your common application essay is to share with colleges something about you that there's no way they could learn from your grades or your test scores or your teacher recs, okay? So we want to fill out the portrait of who you are. So a question that direct straight up asks about who are you, what is your identity, share your story, what a better way to do that. I love this prompt because it really helps elicit from students answer choices that give colleges what they want in this process. Now, what does that look like in specific terms? That can look like maybe you're sort of this introverted detail lover and you write this beautiful essay about how you love to, you know, study insects. And it speaks to sort of the, you know, the cerebral person in you where you can observe them and then study all of their inner workings and how they work, even though they're on this minute scale. And many people think bugs are, you know, tiny and useless, but you find like so much intricate interest in the organizations that they have and how ants are super organisms or whatever it is, right? Maybe it's that you are a creative soul that forges meaning from adversity and you're going to tell a story of how, you know, you have a sibling with cerebral palsy and one of the ways that you cope is through music and you share that with your sibling and you also are a musician and then this is a part of who you are and it's also your background, right? It's your family and it's how you've overcome that and how you've made sacrifices, etc. right? In any case, you wanna use a specific story and you want to, throughout this story, show how the actions you take reveal something about you. Cool? Cool, so number one's a great essay prompt. Number five, five is another one of my favorites. Discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. I love this because it has a built-in wow. And what I mean by that is this is an aha or an epiphany essay. If you have a realization and it sparks a period of personal growth, sparks, and you're like, whoa, and a new understanding of yourself, that new understanding should be, or usually is, an aha. Now you do have to be careful. Sometimes I have students approach number five and their new understanding is I should work hard, right? Or I'm hardworking or I'm dedicated or it's something very typical. What I really love for this kind of prompt is when you have a breakthrough, right? Emotionally and mentally. If you have a mental health kind of breakthrough, that's what's really great to write about for five. And this is why I love five. And an aha by nature, an epiphany by nature is interesting because it's a standout moment in your life. It's where something clicked and usually it's some sort of universal truth. So if you have that in your life, 
Five is an awesome essay, and I highly recommend it. It's a great essay to write because it has that natural built-in, wow, huh, kind of feeling. And that's what you want your essay readers to see. You want an aha to come to you that they feel too. You want to take them with you. Cool? Okay, good. So those are kind of my two favorites. Now I'm going to talk about the ones I don't like as much. Now, just because I don't like these essay prompts as much doesn't mean that you can't write an incredible essay for them. And I certainly have students who have written incredible essays for every one of these prompts. But I will say that there are some dangers to look out for. So first I'm going to talk about number seven, which is share an essay on any topic of your choice. Of these three categories that they list off here, there's one that I do like, okay? So I will say you can absolutely write number seven if it's the second one, which is one that responds to a different prompt. Sometimes in your essay writing process for college, you write a bunch of essays for a bunch of different schools, and one of the essays you write, because of the way that prompt is, happens to be just awesome, and you were really good at writing that prompt, then please, by all means, do number seven. Great. But if you read all of one through six and you couldn't quite figure out what to write, and then you just kind of wrote something, and you're like, uh, I'll just do number seven, <laughs> be very careful. That can turn out really poorly. A lot of times, if you don't have a prompt, it can lend itself to essays that aren't as deep, that don't answer interesting questions, and that don't push you to really reveal who you are as much. It doesn't always happen, but I find a lot of times students cop out because they can't think of anything for one through six, and then they just kind of stumble into seven, and they're like, oh, I'm going to just make up my own prompt. And it's actually a move of laziness rather than a move of insight. Playing by the rules and and creating a story that fits one of the prompts is part of what I think within the application is you showing that you know how to follow directions and you can play along. That's not to say that there's not a time for number seven. There is, and I just told you what it is. But otherwise, I usually recommend you do one through six unless you've really got some idea and it's just, you know, you know it's amazing and there's a reason for it. Okay, next one that's a little bit dangerous is number two, which is the lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success. Recount a time you faced a challenge, setback, or failure. How did it affect you, and what did you learn from the experience? A couple of caveats. One, if you have serious, ridiculous challenges in your life, meaning you have a really tough, hard knocks life, which, by the way, if you have serious hardships in your life or that's your background or story, you can also write it for prompt number one. And you might want to figure out which prompt kind of pushes and pulls you to say things that are deeper or more interesting. But if you have these kind of really fundamental hard knocks life kind of experiences, please write about them. You've earned your stripes and you should be writing number two or number one and sharing those stories. However, the majority of my students that are writing number two are talking about challenges, setbacks, and failures that are really typical for teenagers. And what are really typical? Well, I'm about to tell you, and this is what I want you to be aware of and beware of. If you write something super typical, number two can easily fall into that cliche bucket of essays I've read a hundred times before. So you've just got to be super careful on number two. Grades. I talk about this in other videos. Sports. My football team was failing, and then we got better through teamwork. Maybe they moved. Schools. And then it was really hard because it was hard to meet friends. But I met some friends and then things got better. And then I started getting good grades again, right? These kind of things are very typical teenage experiences. If you're going to talk about something like this, I just, I almost would say look for another prompt. Is it possible to do it well? Sure. It's possible to do anything well. It's possible to be extraordinary in anything that you do. It's possible to find the irony. But I just think it's a lot harder. Let's quickly talk about what's left because some of you are like, what about the other ones? And I'm just going to give you my quick tips on the rest that remain. Number three is somewhat dangerous, but not always. Reflect on a time you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. What prompted your thinking? What was the outcome? This can be really awesome, especially if it's an intellectual kind of discussion, but it can also go the wrong direction, particularly if you're going to talk about politics. You've got to be very careful. You've always got to think you don't know the politics of the person reading your essay, so just be careful on politics with number three. Number four, reflect on something that someone has done for you that has made you happy or thankful in a surprising way. How has this gratitude affected or motivated you? I love hearing about students who are grateful, but for this question, it's really important that you talk about how this gratitude has affected or motivated you. Biggest mistake students make here is they talk all about someone else the whole essay, and I feel like the student themselves is really not on the page. So if you write this one, you have to really be careful about the balance and make sure that this relationship with this person you're grateful for also reflects actions you take and you aren't just this passive member receiving lots of things that you're grateful for. Cool? Awesome. And finally, number six, describe a topic, idea, or concept you find so engaging it makes you lose all track of time. Why does it captivate you? What or who do you turn to when you want to learn more?
this essay can be good for my students who are kind of going for state schools or applying to schools that are say ranked 30 to 50, this prompt tends to do really well. For my students who are a little bit more ambitious, maybe applying to top 10 schools, top 15 schools, this prompt can be a little bit tougher because there tends to be certain shoebox genres that this falls into and then those essays tend to sound alike. And those essays in particular are I lose all track of time in dance, doing physics, and doing music. Anything where you kind of get in the zone. I've also read cross country kind of essays as well. Sometimes those kind of essays are not quite enough to pop my students over the line at a top 20 college. And obviously if you come from an underrepresented background or something like that, like the bar goes down a little bit and you can be more free or if you're from an underrepresented state or if you have some other kind of edge or something like that, what I'm saying might not apply, but I see a lot of people write about, you know, playing their trombone makes them lose all track of time or their piano reveries. And I've read that essay before and it doesn't teach me that much about you. It just tells me you really like dance or you really like the flute or something like that. So just be careful with this one. It can be a good essay, but you want to be uncommon in some way. And I've just thrown the bucket of common your way. So you know what everybody else is doing. That's what everybody else is doing. Again, I don't want to dissuade you. I want you to write the best essay you can. If this is the best essay you got, write it, right? And essays are only one portion of your application. Just because you're not a brilliant writer doesn't mean you're not going to college, everyone. Just know this. There are thousands of colleges in the United States. And I would guess if you are applying, you can go to one of them. So please don't worry. Don't fret. Don't freak out because you're like, oh my gosh, Brooke, all I can think of is the things that you're saying that are cliche and I don't know what to do. Well, if you don't know what to do, you can watch more videos on my channel. We have more ideas on what you might be able to write about. But even beyond that, I want you to like let yourselves breathe a little bit and know that as long as you are on this journey and you want to get a college degree and you want to complete it, you are doing the right things and you are the future and good things are going to come your way. So keep at it. Don't stress out too much. It's going to be okay, but I want to help you make it as awesome as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time at SuperTutor TV. Take care and good luck on your essays.